welcome to the American Wood Shop. I'm Scott Phillips, and as promised, today is all about finishing. If you want to finish like a pro, this show's for you. So stay with us. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by. Since 1928, Woodcraft has been providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools, for tool pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine, projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish silicon steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on, a table to share meals, a house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio, providing furniture to neighbors in need. Are you ready to make magic? Well, when it comes to finishing, that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. This is a piece of corkscrew willow, live edge, and I've sanded it thoroughly, tacked it off, it's clean, and that's a key to great finishing. You have to sand it well. And now I'm using perhaps my favorite finish. It's called Arm R Seal. And as I'm bringing that color out of this white piece of wood, look at the figure. But you can see the right finish really, really makes this wood come alive. And then Last week, what we did was we built this back here. And it's a combination of corkscrew willow, live edge, walnut, hard maple, corkscrew willow, capper right there. And it's wrapped. And we're going to use the same finish and brush it out on the inside and on the outside and take a look at that. Okay, so the finishing touches on this piece are just brushing out the red oak veneer case. And it's a combination of the species of wood that really makes this piece shine. And of course that will have to dry and then it gets lightly sanded, no more than a couple minutes to just knock down the fuzz of the first coat when it raises the grain, tack it clean, put on the second coat of finish, and then it's done. And then I'll brush out this edge, being careful of the drips. And that is how you can finish just about any project you have. And this is a good tabletop finish as well. So that is one for the ages. Now it's time to head outside and we're going to spray some finishes and some oil and some water base. And you'll see magic happen there. This is called a high volume, low pressure spray system. When you buy it, it comes with the air supply and basically it puts 90% of the finish on the project doesn't go airborne so well as radically as just a compressed air sprayer. Now whatever you do always wear an N95 dust mask, safety glasses with side shield and work in a well ventilated place. I'll turn this on I want you to see the magic of this. We'll do some spraying on this utility stand and then on this bench and this is the outdoor oil oil based again. So let me roll this around to the side and watch what happens. That's a reclaimed top. I have it in airbrush mode when that dial is at a 45. When you put it up and down, it creates that pattern right there. And when you put it straight up like that, it's a flat pattern. 
and you definitely want to do light coat. I'll do the top and come back to it after that's dry. Now watch this. This seat's really going to pop. Uh-oh. I'm running out of finish. I'll have to recharge it. So let me show you. Here's how it goes. Wait until the pressure comes off. Release that. Unlock this. And you never pour any finishes down a drain into the water supply, ever. If you have extra finish, let it get hard before you throw the can away. And now, what I can do with the outdoor oil. This has been thoroughly stirred. Not, you never shake a finish. In it goes, like this, and I'm going to need all of it. That's good. And some people say you shouldn't use the very bottom of the can on this stuff. I do. It's pricey, and I've never had problems with it, as long as you stir it well. So that is done now. This has a number two needle in it. What's that mean? Let me show you before we turn it on. This little adjustment knob right here, this is an important thing for you to understand. See that spring? Keep that. That goes on right after the needle goes in. That's the needle. That's a number two. They come with a finer point, which is for thinner finishes. Now that's tight. You don't want to dimple that. One, two. Two partial turns back. That should be perfect. Now let's get to it. So it's straight up and down. It's going to give you that flat pattern. You want to move your whole body with it. And you want to trigger it off when you're at the end of the run. That way you don't get a heavier then you want spray. That's good. Now on the elm legs, look at this. I put it in airbrush mode. That's a diagonal. And I can also use that along the edge. And I use the same technique to join the elm legs as these back southern yellow pine legs. I tended them the same exact way. Then the branches. Here we go. I don't want too much on there, but that gives me exactly the look that I want. I like the wild colors that come out of this. And then here's the walnut tabletop. Watch this. Out of the airbrush mode into the vertical mode now, like that. And this is live edge. And some people go, wait a minute. What's this bark? That's walnut. And that's what walnut bark looks like when it's been sanded. Now, I want to put that in this mode and watch what I do. On, off, on, off. And then airbrush mode again to do the legs. So these are elms that have dried for five years. Get this all finished out, and we'll take the final look. Now, we need a piece of plywood, and you'll see why in just a second. Everything's been sprayed to perfection. That red oak looks really amazing. And if you do get an overspray situation, you want to get right to it. The idea is go light, but if you see any drips, any runs, Brush it out with an all bristle natural brush before it gets hard. That's red oak. This is the combination of 
corkscrew willow and a leg that's just not behaving and I know from experience I need to glue that one in but let me pop that right back in and something on design for the seat to be comfortable there we go that's solid this back has to rake or splay back 15 degrees for it to be comfortable to sit in and I love these elm legs that looks really good and then let's see if this is going to behave look at that walnut top live edge again with elm legs and you saw me make this on two shows back now there's one thing you have to do once you spray you empty the can with and you put a little bit of low odor mineral spirits in it and then decant that into the old finish can then you put fresh low odor mineral spirits into the spray can let me put that where you can see it lock it back on and why are you doing this very important to keep all these parts clean of the finish if they dry hard it can ruin the gun now this is where you need the piece of plywood you turn this on the air supply and with all your safety gear on I'm spraying outside low odor mineral spirit Okay, I spray it in each one of the three modes. And that allows me to do the next step. That cleans all the moving parts, but you still have to take it all apart once the air is, pressure is off of it use gloves for this part right here and you take all the pieces off and you put that in a plastic bucket with low odor mineral spirits and let that soak overnight remove everything and keep mineral spirits charged in there and that way your gun will be clean and good to use in the future now when it comes to finishing gurus this is the man okay tom monahan and Tom, you've taught me so much over the years. And what's the hottest new finish that you enjoy using right now? Well, I'm going to say it's the hard wax oils, which have kind of come into the States in the last couple decades, maybe. Uh, European, they've been over there for, for centuries. So it, it's a simplistic finish, but it produces a look and feel that you typically don't get from like a varnish or a water-based product. So this is a perfect piece of walnut and we'll show you how to work with it. Okay, so here are the steps, but surface prep is key and we've worked through 100, 150, then 220 grit sandpaper um, and we've cleaned that thoroughly. This is walnut, it's a live edge seat. You'll see one at the end of the show. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay, so let's see your voodoo. Okay, you so the, the real key with this is just the simplicity of it. You don't have to you know, be an artist, you don't have to use a brush, it's just a, it's a linseed oil polymer wax combination. And when you mix it up, it, it looks like linseed oil, it kind of smells like linseed oil. And there's, there's two ways of working with the product. You can use the product by itself, or you can actually use a hardener with it, which kind of catalyzes the oil and wax together. And that's what we'll do, because that will give you the quickest cure time but also gives you a little extra durability. This is a bench seat. It's gonna give you a good scratch resistance, water resistance finish. And I'm just gonna use a, a plastic spreader, Bondo trowel. You can use whatever works well for you, but these seem to work well because they clean up. And I'm just going to pour some oil on there, which is a lot. And then I'm just gonna use the, the spreader to kind of trowel it on the wood and you can kind of see it's going to wet itself into the wood and start to develop the color. Now you can apply it 
by hand with a cloth if you feel like rubbing it in like a traditional linseed oil finish. See, I'm gonna tell you I already have more than enough on here. Well, one hot tip for everybody. There are three products that you definitely wanna be careful with. Those are linseed oils, tongue oils, and Danish oils, because right. if you're using rags and you wad them up and throw them in a trash can, they can spontaneously oh, oh, combust. Yeah, they will. Yeah. And so dispose of all finishing rags safely, exactly. take them outside, hang them up away from plants, I keep, animals. I just keep a coffee can or, or an empty gallon can full of water. Water and throw and it in I, there. I throw them in there and I seal it up tight and before I toss them away. I just let them. So that's how you get it on. And you can kind of see already how that walnut is accepting that. This is oh, beautiful right here. I'm loving this. Gorgeous stuff. This is my first exposure to it. I see? was a little dubious, but see? I'm loving never, it now because look at that. Never, never too old to learn something new. That's right? a fact. See, now, now I've got the oil on and I'm gonna let it soak in. Okay. Just a little bit. See, now I used, I mixed two ounces. I used an ounce, one ounce. So I'm gonna end up with an ounce of extra material. So if you got a hundred other things you'd like to oil, we could do that later. So how long do you let this dry before you do the next coat? I'm go uh, Next coat, um, because it is an oil base, you treat it just like any other type of an oil based product. Uh, we're gonna say 12 to 24 hours. Okay. The catalyst will actually make it dry a little faster uh, just because it's, it's causing a chemical reaction with the oil and the wax. Now. Gotcha. This is where speed and efficiency comes in. Absolutely. I could hand rub this with a cloth, but I'm just gonna take a, a white, this is just a white polishing pad, like a 3M Scotch-Brite pad. This is a surf prep pad, and I put it on a five inch sander. I'm gonna buff it in. Now, as he's buffing that out, Susie's with Cheryl's right now, Tom's wife, and they're gonna give you tips on refinishing doors. Yeah, looking good. Hey Cheryl, welcome to the shop. Thanks for it's having me. It's great having you here. <laughs> so Cheryl and Tom have been helping us decide on a stain for our doors and trim work in the house. And through a big selection process, they helped us land on nutmeg and it's a great neutral color. I love it. And it's a gel stain, and the cool thing is, if I decide a little bit later, I can change it, add darker light, you know, and tone it up. So it's nice that I'm not totally set on this if, if I want to add to it, right? right? Right. You can always change it later. The nice thing about the gel stains is you can layer it. Cool. I like that. I like that. All right. So tell us a little bit more about it. And we've got the wood all prepped, right. sanded it. Got everything off and we're ready, so. The best thing about this product is it is thick. It's a gel, so it's perfect for woodwork, for doors. You can even leave your door hanging and do it right on your door. Oh, that's because nice. Because it doesn't drip. Very cool, very cool. So I'm just gonna mix this up a little. Okay. And then we're gonna apply it. And it's a, it's an oil-based product and it is also very low odor. They use a low odor mineral spirits, which is perfect. Yeah, and so you can just do it in your house. And right, don't right. Have to it's worry not going to chase you out. Cool. And a lot of people use a, a bristle brush like this for oil-based products. I, I kind of like the, the little sponge? polyfoam sponge, okay. sponge brushes, and it's great for getting down in this area here. Okay. So let's. Usually, what I do is I start on the interior here because you want to get these panels done. Right. And that sponge, I think, is good right. to get in there. Oh, it's perfect the for these edges. Yeah. Just like that. And this is just the stain. We can add the top coat later. Yeah. With an oil-based stain like this, you want to wait a good 24 hours. Okay. And so we're definitely going to wait till till tomorrow to do the finish on Okay. It. But... Here we go. Oh, I'm liking the color. And look at that beautiful yeah. color. And this is a radiata pine, and gel stains work really great on this because they don't penetrate in real heavy, and it'll give it a nice, even look. Okay. And then what I'm using is just a nice cloth rag, and then we're just gonna go around this edge. And I also like to, on this, 
make sure you do the edge around it first mm -hmm. because if there's anything left over, it's gonna get darker. Right. So if you wipe that right away, then you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I'm really loving the color though. Yeah. And then like on the edges, you see you got a little build up there. You can use these bristle brushes to get that out, which is really, yeah, it really helps. Yeah, it kind of buffs Just it. like that. Yeah. Yeah, this color is so nice because it is neutral. It mm -hmm. goes with just about everything. So if I decided down the road I wanted to add a different tone or something, so what would the prep process be for that? Well, what you probably do is just clean it real good with some mineral spirits. Okay. And you could actually put a darker color over it. Okay. You can't make it lighter. Right, yeah. obviously, But yeah. you can do a little bit darker. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna need to. I'm really liking this. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful. Look how that makes that green pop. It really does, that's so pretty. That is great. I just want to show you something here. Um, if let's say you've got a spot somewhere that you've come across and it doesn't really take evenly or very uh, not enough not enough color for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, basically, you can use that that bristle brush and take off a little product. I'll show you on this panel here. Oh, cool. So is that you a, can kind actually, of a dry brush? Right. You just technique? dry brush it on, okay. and, and you can almost just take it off just like that. You don't even need to wipe it. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you that darkens it a little bit. you want a little bit more color, mm -hmm. or if you, let's say you have a little spot that takes really light, and you want to add a little more color, like this piece right here. You know, let's say you just want a little bit more on there. Just dry brush it on. Yeah. And it just helps it even out. Cool. I love good tips like that. Thank you, that's awesome. Tomorrow we could put a second coat on this and it's done. But what I want you to do is feel it though. Oh! See? That's, that is that's the wow smooth. factor right there. Whoa. That's the wax. And again, tell us what this is called. This is um, the hard wax, General Finishes hard wax oil. And the simplicity of it is what's appealing, I think. Yeah, so. You don't, you don't have to be a Da Vinci to finish your project. Okay, well, one more coat after this dries overnight, yep. and that's done. And speaking of being done, we're about wrapped up for this show, but you need to see this one finish. We'll get set up to use the gel top coat satin on this red oak. Now, surface prep again. It's thoroughly sanded and clean. This is red oak veneer on MDF, the game table. So. We're using a gel top coat, satin general finishes, and what's the base in this? So this is a, uh, this is basically an alkyd urethane. Okay. You know, it's a wipe on urethane, and obviously the reason you call it a gel is because it's thick. Right. And, and that gives you a couple of, of things to work with. Our Armor Seal product, which has been around forever, is liquid, very, very thin, but they're both designed to be wiped on. What's kind of nice about the gels are, you can apply them you know, as simple as wiping it on. And they're designed to go on thin. But this will produce a hard, durable, water-resistant, chemically-resistant finish. So it is a top coat. It's just that it's thick. And this is exactly what we're putting on top of the now perfectly colored doors that Cheryl helped us with. And the cool thing about that is you can actually leave the door on, not recommended, but if you're in a pinch to get it done, you can leave it on and you don't have drips and runs because it's like Vaseline. It's thick and exactly. it stays where you want to yeah, buff it. No runs. No drips, no, no errors. No sags. Okay. See? Oh yeah, now that makes that red oak just exactly, pop. And that's exactly what it needed. Oh, Tom, my hat's off to you. Great <laughs> job. Thank Great. you. Now you know all the secrets. You too can become a finishing pro. Just keep it simple. And that's it for this week. Next week, it's on to furniture restoration, all the little tricks. And I certainly hope that we see you then. Stay well and get busy in that wood shop. Boy, you make it so easy. Since 1928, Woodcraft has been providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. 
Pro Tools for Tool Pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Providing furniture to neighbors in need. For more information about the American Wood Shop, you can watch free episodes 24-7 on our website, and you can find us on these social media platforms.